I was escorted to the spirit world by the brightest light. In 2005, Abraham Iply George, a Yupik Eskimo, of Manokotok, Alaska, was mortally injured in a terrible snowmobile accident and died on a life flight while en route to an Anchorage hospital. Paramedics revived him, but Iply had already left his body. The Lord Jesus met and took him to heaven to see people who had served him faithfully. Then Jesus took him to hell, where he saw the torment of the unsaved. Here is the testimony. Manokotok, Alaska November 29, 2005 I woke up that morning and had coffee. It seemed to be a normal day nothing seemed out of the ordinary. After lunch, I got my snowmobile and sled ready and took off. I have a special wood hauling sled that I made. While on my way, I met two brothers from the village who said they were also going wood hauling. But before we went on our way to the wood forest, we smoked marijuana first and got high. After getting to our area, we began cutting trees, and soon we were gathering them to load them up. I asked the younger of the two brothers if he would make a run into Dillingham for it was close by to buy me a bottle of alcohol. He agreed and I gave him money. We followed the trail home and came to one of the creeks. I headed down the embankment of that creek. On my way down, my snowmobile abruptly stopped. The right ski had slid under an upside down, U-shaped branch that was strong enough to stop the snowmobile suddenly. I quickly looked behind me. I could see one of the brothers right behind me hitting the brakes on his snowmobile, trying to avoid hitting my sled full of logs which was coming at me. I remember getting hit by the sled. I tried to jump off my snowmobile but the sled extremely heavy with logs slammed into my back with such force and violence that it crushed me. I was pinned helplessly against my snowmobile. I could not move and began to feel pain in my body. The brothers jumped out of their snowmobiles and rushed to my aid almost immediately. In order to get the sled off, they had to offload the logs until they were able to lift it. In the meantime, I began to experience blackouts, going in and out of consciousness. I also began to vomit lots of blood. Finally, I was brought to the airport and I made it to the Dillingham Hospital. The doctors there ex raid me and I could hear them speaking they said, he's gonna die from his injuries before the medevac arrives. According to their x-rays, I had three shattered ribs. My pelvis was broken in four places. I had four crushed vertebrae. My spine was bent and severed. My liver and spleen were torn by a broken rib. And a lung was punctured by a broken rib. Needless to say, I was bleeding internally. While at Kanakanak Hospital, a Russian man came and prayed for me. He said, Lord, if it is your will, extend his life. The next thing I knew, I was on the medevac to Anchorage on a Learjet. There were, four, paramedics or EMTs on the plane, and they were monitoring me. My blood pressure continued. Dropping. Finally, my heart stopped. I had a cardiac arrest and I passed out. It felt like I fell asleep. Somehow. I got up and saw my body lying on the stretcher and the paramedics working on me. I was having an out-of-body experience. Yet, I could still see, hear, smell, taste and feel I had all my senses. Even though I could see my body lying on the stretcher. I could see them using what I thought were battery jumper cables on me and I could see my body and chest rise when they used it on me. But the heart monitor screen only showed a flat line. The defibrillator did not work I did not respond. Then I heard another EMT say, put down the time. When he died. After they wrote it down, an EMT said, let's try it one more time. And they used the battery cables on me again, and my body jumped once more. This time it appeared to work my heart. Started again. The ascent into heaven. But then, the brightest, 
brilliant light a figure of a man was standing by me on the right side. He was filled with love, joy, and peace. He spoke in Yupik and he talked to me in a gentle way that filled me with a gentle, tingling feeling. He asked me if I wanted to go to the place where the saved souls go. The place that he brought me to was filled with God's glory. I saw gold streets below my feet. Even the ground was full of light and there was no shadow. When he brought me up, I looked for a sun or a light but there was no such light. I wondered where the light was coming from. He, Jesus, said, I am the light of the world. I saw a lot of saved souls from all different nationalities with this brilliant light. The saved souls had white garments even the angels had white garments. And there were only young people. There were no old people. I recognized lots of saved souls. I saw people from Akiachak and Manokotok. I saw those from my family, my Yupa, grandma, aunts, uncles, my wife's relatives, and ones that I never met before. I'd wondered in my thoughts, who's that? Jesus knew my every thought and told me their names. This is Evan John, and, the names of a Mr. and Mrs. Minista, and Andruski Gloko, and so on. I realized that they look so young with brilliantly bright and smooth skins, and they were dressed in white robes. Their robes had a form with the brightest, brilliant, and purest fog that moved on their robes. I saw the ones who died of old age, but here they were all young, about 33 years old. I even saw a woman who died of old age, but here in heaven, she was a young woman. I saw another woman who died as an old woman, but here in heaven, she was also a young woman. I asked, how come they are so young? Jesus replied, when they were young, they accepted me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Men and women had black hair and full sets of hair. Women had long, wavy hair and a gentle wind. Seemed to be blowing on their hair. Some had wings and some not wearing the brightest, brilliant, and purest white robe made of fog. They said in heaven, we would no longer be married, but live. As brother and sister. Jesus would say, look. Each time I looked, my eyes opened. I even saw many little children, and angels with wings flying. Around them but some had none. The feather touch of the angels was gentle and the brightest of the light on my right told me these babies were the ones from miscarriages, abortions and stillborns. But their parents, mothers who are saved, will recognize them and the babies will recognize their parents and moms, I was told. That place is so wonderful. Jesus made that place for the saved souls. The descent into hell. Then the brightest light asked, do you want to see where the unsaved souls live? But I had no authority or control over my spirit and soul, whatever the Lord spoke, my whole being obeyed his voice. Then Jesus and I turned around from the saved souls and went to a different place. But we did not walk rather, we began to glide downwards. As soon as we began descending into darkness, I began to smell an awful smell and I gasped for air. It seemed toxic. We came to a complete darkness but I could hear shouting and gnashing of teeth. I could hear millions upon millions of people even before we reached the bottomless pit and outer darkness. I heard countless people in different foreign languages, but I could also hear voices in Yupik, too. There were people gnashing their teeth and wailing and screaming in torment. There were also Christians who disobeyed the Lord and became as the unprofitable servant who is thrown into the outer darkness. Matthew 22:13 then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25:30 And cast you the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. They and the people who died in their sins were crying, Give me another chance. There are different levels of hell, and the worst of the sinners are tormented in the worst way. 
Isaiah 66,24, Their worms will not die, nor will their fire be quenched. The Three Men in Hell The Lord showed me three different Yupik-speaking men. The glory of the Lord showed me the first Yupik-speaking man. The glory of the Lord showed me the lost soul, and worms were coming out of his eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. The man said in Yupik, This is no place for me, I am tired of being thirsty. I am suffering and tired of being tormented. Why am I here? Give me another chance. He said this three times. The Lord answered him after the third time. When you were on earth I gave you many chances. I had my arms wide open to receive you. I called you by name, but you didn't listen to my words and my voice. You chose to enjoy the pleasures of sins, drugs, alcohol, and earthly pleasures. You chose not to go to church and repent and live for me. You will be here for a long time until the judgment day, then you will be judged according to your works and thrown into the lake of fire, where the demons will torment you forever. The Lord then showed me another yuppik speaking man. The glory of the Lord showed me the lost soul, and worms were coming out of his eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. The man said, Don't look at me don't come near me I am ashamed of myself. This is no place for me. I am tired of being thirsty, I am suffering, tired of being tormented. Why am I here? Give me another chance. He said this three times. The Lord answered him after the third time. When you were on earth, you drank alcohol. Before your time came, and before you repented and came to me to be my servant, you took your own life and committed suicide. You took your life that does not belong to you, you cheated me by taking your own life. Here you will be forever until the judgment day, and then you will be thrown into the lake of fire where the demons will torment you forever. There were many people in hell, many souls, they were all too late and without Jesus. The Lord showed me a third yuppik man, who was a preacher. The glory of the Lord showed me the lost soul, and worms were coming out of his eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. The man said, This is no place for me. I am tired of being thirsty, I am suffering, tired of being tormented. Why am I here? Give me another chance. I have been serving the Lord and ministering as a preacher all my life. Why am I here? He said this three times. The Lord answered after the third time. You are right when you said you served me all your life on earth, but you hated one person and when you hated that one person, you hated me. Here you will be forever until the judgment day, and then you will be thrown into the lake of fire and the demons will torment you forever. Matthew 6 14 15 says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Matthew 23:13 also says, Then the king told the attendants, Tie him hand and foot, and throw him outside into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then, while we were in hell, the Lord showed me falling souls. These people did not have Jesus. Those who die, fall asleep, without Jesus will wake up in hell. Even right now, as we speak, people are falling into hell. Those worms in hell will never die. The worms are there right now and upon those poor souls. After a while, in my mind, I said I didn't want to remain in hell anymore. I was scared and frightened. I thought, am I going to be here, too? Am I going to be stuck here, too? Am I going to spend eternity here? And the voice, the brightest light told me, as if he read my mind, I am going to take you back. The return to heaven and earth. Jesus brought me back to the place where the saved souls go. He brought me back to heaven, up to the brightest place where I met with my relatives again.
The Lord stood me next to my dad, who said, It is not your time you have to go back. After spending some time in heaven, the Lord told me he was bringing me back. And when Jesus and I were going down, he said to me, Tell my children, I love them. Tell them there are heaven and hell. Tell them I am the way, the truth, and the life. Tell them no one comes to the Father. Except through me tell my children I am coming soon. He said this to me three times. I didn't want to go back. I wanted to stay in that comfortable place. The Lord said, If you don't tell my children and my people, I will throw you into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and there you will suffer for eternity. And the fire is not quenched. Tell my people and children that heaven and hell are so real. When he said that, I got scared and it gave me the chills. When he was bringing me back, I said I didn't know how to speak in front of people. Jesus said, I will take you to places you never went. I will help you when you speak about heaven and hell. Those who are spirit-filled will be your friends. Tell my children I love them. Tell them. There are heaven and hell. Tell them I am the way, the truth, and the life. Tell them there's no way. To the Father except through Jesus. As the Lord was bringing me closer to my body, I could see the doctors unplugging the cords of life. Support from my body. Then I heard many voices of angels singing, Silent night, holy night in. The most beautiful way I have ever heard. When I touched my body, I came to myself. I could not hear the singing any longer. I suddenly felt the pain of my injuries. I could feel the tubes in my mouth and nose. I was going to tell the brightest, brilliant light on my right to bring me back to heaven, but he was gone. I wanted to stay where love, joy and peace and the peaceful, brightest brilliant light was and stay there. It was Christmas Day in 2005 and doctors at the Alaska Native Medical Center were unplugging my life support system. They said, he will not survive. I had developed pneumonia in my good lung the other lung was torn and useless from being damaged during the accident and it was ending my life. They let my family in to see me for the last time. I was given last ministries. I called the preacher's name and he came back. He was glad to see me alive. Then smoke began to swirl around me, and it swirled in my room for three days. The Spirit of the Lord, as a bright fog and the most beautiful smell, was circling above my bed. I asked the doctors and nurses tending me, why is there smoke? I asked if there was a fire. They said there was no smoke or fire. I guess only I was seeing it. Each time I breathed in that smoke, I could feel healing taking place in my body. I felt a tingling that started on top of my head, and as time passed, that tingling began traveling down my body. I could feel bones moving in my body. I could hear noises as bones were being put back in place. I began recovering. On the second day, the doctors brought a portable x-ray in my room and re-examined me. They saw the bones healed and could not find the injuries. They looked for the gash in my liver and could not find it. The doctors loudly exclaimed their unbelief saying, This can't be. Then they brought me to physical therapy and they let me walk, I walked on my own and praised God. On the third day of my awakening, all the pain was gone from my body. It was December 27th. 2005 the doctors discharged me then, for there was nothing wrong with me anymore, the Lord. Jesus Christ healed all of my injuries. I told the doctors and nurses about what I experienced and they said, this is real. It's time to change our lives. Ministry Since his recovery, Abraham George has been traveling to many places witnessing for the Lord. Jesus Christ and the wonderful miracle of healing God has bestowed upon him. During his witnessing, signs and wonders followed Abraham, just as signs and wonders followed Jesus. 
apostles and others who gave their lives to Jesus and witnessed about him. Abraham says, the world is not getting better. Even the weather is of the last days. All the messages that Jesus gave me are biblical. When I read the Bible, I see what the Lord was saying to me. Get right with God. Make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, pick up your cross and follow him. There is a heaven to be won and hell to shun.